Hi, Glass Slipper family. My name is Christina Lee, and I'm the co-owner here at The Glass Slipper, the country's largest pageant resale site. Um, it is our goal to provide you with opportunities and exclusive opportunities and offers uh, to make your pageant journey more affordable and enjoyable. And joining me today is one of my very favorite people. Um, he is an author of several books including Born to be Rich, Born to Dream, um, let's see, a Riot and Assault on Modern Leadership, I need to read that one, and the, the book that's in your empowerment package, which is 90 Day Race. He's also been a former CEO of Hoverboard, and oh my gosh, there's so many things, CEO of um, CEO Cruise, and motivational speaker, and business coach, there is so much, I, like I don't have time to, to name all your accolades. <laughs> but thank you so much, Dr. Roberts, for being here and to do the, uh, doing this interview. Really appreciate it. My pleasure, Christina. I, I'm really excited about it. I love what you're doing. I love the mission of the Glass Slipper. I love how you're doing it. And uh, so love to support your community. Well, thank you so much. So I want to just jump in and get started and talk about the 90 Day Race because I read the book. And the first time I talked to you about it, you're like, it's only going to take you 34 minutes. And it really did. <laughs> I was like, how did you know that? But it did, and it was a very short and impactful read. And um, the reason I wanted to include it in the empowerment package was because it pertains to every pageant girl out there because we are getting ready for competitions. Um, most pageant girls are founders of uh, nonprofits. Uh, they are community leaders. They are career women. And um, I think everybody need to, needs to read this book. So I'd love for you to um, expand on that and why the 90 day race is important for our audience. Certainly. Well, you know, first of all, I can tell you that uh, out of all of my books, this, this is my personal favorite. And one of the reasons for that is because it's the principle of the 90 day race. It follows the laws of nature with seasons. We have three months of fall, you know, most parts of the country and uh, winter and spring and summer. And it follows those uh, business quarters built on a quarterly reporting structure. Uh, and then you look at our military and we take inept, incompetent, uh, <laughs> physically out of shape people and in 90 days, in what we call a boot camp, we have them fighting machines ready to defend our very freedoms. So to, uh, it's no accident that you can take those same principles, the same 90 day race principle and apply it to so many areas of life. When I started looking back to whenever I made the decision to change my eating habits, uh, it was in the middle of a business lunch and you know, uh, I made the decision that that is it. I, uh, the, in fact, I was, had flown first class to the business meeting and I was flying back that night. Had the same flight attendants on both. So they knew what I had and, and all the refills and the extras that I had on the way to going. And literally on the way back, they thought, oh, you're gonna uh, love the desserts. You're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna save a couple extra for you. And they didn't understand. I was like, absolutely not. I'm done with this. And it's because the guy I met with had flown on their private jet for their company uh, to meet with me did not want any appetizers, ordered a salad, said he ran 10 miles before he caught the plane that morning. And I'm thinking, you gotta be kidding me. I, and I had excused my behavior because of my success. And I just thought, you know, I, I get to do what I want and it's because look at the stress that I handle or look at what, how many employees I have or 1500, you know, at the time. It's 24 years old, you know? And <clears throat> so, uh, but I made the decision that that was it. And I did not wait till Monday to make the decision. I didn't wait till the, you know, the start of the new month and, or the new year. When I made the decision to get my weight and get, my, get physically healthy, uh, it was instant. It was instant. I literally, the food that I'd already ordered just tasted, I, did, I just couldn't even eat it. It was already gross in my mouth. And, uh, but I made that decision. And it was over the next 90 days that set the habits that I've now followed for you know, 13 years, lost 75 pounds over the last the, the two years following that, and then just stayed, have stayed the, you know, roughly the same weight since then. Uh, and so there, but, but that started with a 90-day race. Uh, I've seen people who were making you know, a few hundred dollars a month start making literally over $100,000 a month because they went on a 90-day race, uh, because there were certain habits. And really what I learned with the 90 day principle are, is there are things that you've been trying to accomplish for years. And it may be starting a business, growing a business, losing weight, uh, you know, winning a pageant, uh, and uh, making a, an NBA, NFL or an NBA or, you know, a professional athlete, making the Olympics. It's the same principle. 
uh, you could have had this goal that you've been working towards for years and have never been able to accomplish it with steady effort or with occasional effort. Even though there were some pushes along the way, there was not a long enough period of time, uh, as in 90 days, there was not a long enough period of time where you were all in, all out, all the time. What are you willing to say no to during that time? Because what you're not willing to say no to is the very reason you aren't where you want to be. And so whenever I coach professional athletes or government officials or other countries uh, on entrepreneurship or launching businesses, it comes down to uh, doing a 90-day race. And I still do at least one 90-day race a year. And it's not because I schedule it. It's because there's something else that I want to be, I want to accomplish. And it requires to be fully successful and be number one or number two in the world at what you do. It requires that kind of massive focus in order to get massive results. Right. That is, that is incredible. And I am in my day four of 90 day race. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love it. And All it right. is a grind. It really is. I mean, we can't press snooze on the uh, alarm clock anymore. And actually it's, it's the most invigorating, um, time that I've had in a really long time, even though it's tiresome. Um, yeah, still alive. You know, uh, Christina, though, I spoke, I used to speak on this principle when I was CEO of a couple of the companies and to our, to our staff and to uh, just places I would keynote. And I felt like it, they would hear it, but they didn't get it whenever I was talking about the 90 day race. And this is before a book ever came out or anything like that. And the two illustrations I always used was weight loss and business because that's how I grew companies was with a 90 day race. It's how I lost weight was with a 90 day race. Uh, it's it, whenever I wrote a book, it was with a 90 day race. It, it, it wasn't over the course of years and you know, all this the people that write and write successfully do it in a compressed period of time. You'll hear that they didn't sleep for five days straight or, you know, those kind of things. They could not stop. It was just coming to them. Right. And, and so it's you're coming, speaking from the overflow, but I could not articulate that in a way that people really got it at a deep level. It wasn't until I ran for the Senate in Montana in 2012 that I had moved to the state residency requirement just to run. And, uh, and, I did, and when I made the decision to run, I was still CEO of another company. I was only in Montana on the weekends even uh, at that. So I hadn't been there. I did not have any relationships. I did not have a war chest. I did not have any political relationships uh, or political capital uh, or resources to mount a, a substantial campaign. But I really felt called to do it. I felt it was in my heart that, you know, this is, you're supposed to do this. Um, and there's, there were some issues that I was passionate about and nobody would kind of stand up. And I felt like David versus Goliath. And everyone's like, ah, I'm not taking on Goliath. You know, uh, the incumbent <laughs> president of the Senate, um, you know, you're, you're getting ready to get crucified, you know. Uh, and so, uh, but I wasn't from there. I didn't know. And I thought he can't affect my career, uh, you know. But uh Little did I know uh, what kind of opposition I would have. But I felt called, and I started to do it. The problem was the election was in 90 days. So I had 90 days for just under a million people who had never heard of me before to know my name, know what I stand for, feel like we're best buddies, and vote for me. <laughs> you know? Uh, and, and I obviously did not have the time to spend one-on-one -on -one with every single one of them. Right. But there were a lot of things that we did. I, uh, some of the things hired the right kind of people who had been there and knew what needed to be done. And I listened to counselor, a counsel. Uh, I was not too arrogant. I knew that I didn't know. I'd never played in this pond before. And so I needed that kind of you know, expertise. But at the end of the day, I still synth, uh, synthesized the information that I got from them with what I knew from business and applied the 90 day race to the Senate run. I lost that election by 33 votes. <laughs> I needed 33 more votes to win. But I'm telling you, what, I, what came out of that was one of the best examples in my life. And it, it, I found that that story is what helped people resonate with the 90-day race principle. They could not resonate with weight loss because they would excuse it and say, well, that your body's different than mine. You don't know what I've got. I've got hereditary and it's genetic and it's, I struggle with this, with that. People write off a lot of weight loss stories. And in business, they just say, well, it's just you. I'm like, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I grew up in a holler in West Virginia with 800 people. 
dirt poor, you know, uh, and, and ha I've had to sleep in my, I lost everything after making several million dollars. I've had to sleep in my car for a couple months. I've been in places that people, most people have never been, is lower than most people have ever been. Uh, and, it, and so it wasn't that I just had something handed to me, but people don't care. They still excuse your success. Yeah, but you're where you are now. And so I found roadblocks to people really getting. And so for your pageant community, uh, you know, when they're preparing for a competition, when they're preparing for uh, impact, really, uh, the, the mindset is so critical. And here's the thing. It's not something you just put on. Right. You can put on the dress. You can put on the, the makeup and apply, you know, have the hair done. But as, as you know, it's what's in here that comes out and that shines. And you either have it or you don't. It's either you or it's not. It's not something you put on. It's something you are. Right. That's. You were exactly right. And I can't remember the quote in the book, but you said, I think it goes something like, I don't, I never fail. What, what is that quote? Yeah, about, it, you know? there, there isn't a failure. It's impossible yeah. to, 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 to fail when you do a 90 day race because wherever you get is further you get. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, you know, they talk about uh, there's no failure, just, you know, experience and, yeah. and learning and things like that. Uh, it's only that that's only true if you if you learn and apply something so the question is how do I take what I know or what I've learned and what physical behavior or what physical action step am I going to take to implement and execute that that's where most people fail they make the decision here but I don't see a change in their checkbook and I don't see a change in their calendar and those are the two places where you can tell what someone's about Right, right. And then you mentioned that most of somebody's success comes after the 90 days. You, I mean, that 90 days is crucial to that success afterwards. Yeah, I didn't lose 75 pounds in 90 days. Yeah. Uh, 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 that would not have been good. Uh, I lost, obviously, uh, during, the, during the 90 days. But it's really that what, what, what happens, it's the same thing that happens in the boot camp. It's the same thing that happens in business whenever I do turnarounds. The yeah. same thing when you're training uh, for a competition or for uh, tryouts of, of a professional sport or the Olympics. Uh, the first 30 days, or first two weeks, you're, you're starting off with what you think you should, you should be doing and what you think you should be doing, uh, uh, direction you should be going. And the behavior, two weeks of intense, stirring the, you know, make, uh, mudding the waters, really putting things out there. That two weeks, you learn so much so fast that you always end up recalibrating and saying, okay. Uh, there's only two or three things. The, one of the biggest principles to the 90-day race is understanding the trivial many versus the critical few. Ultimately, to win a competition, to make the NBA team, to turn the company around, uh, to grow your business, to lose the weight, whatever it is, there's usually two to three critical things that you can mess up on a lot of other things, but you cannot fail with these two or three things, like, like a marriage or a family. I mean, you can you can do a whole lot of things, but there's, a, there's two or three critical few that you just, you know, <laughs> disaster. So the two, the, what are the two to three critical few for you with whatever your goal and mission is? You've got to identify those. You'll go in thinking you know what they are, but you'll really know what they are because you start stripping things away as time goes by. Because the question is this, like in business turnarounds, I would ask myself, is what I'm doing at this moment generating revenue? If the answer is no, why am I doing it? Right. So that was a very specific question. Well, I'm meeting with this person. I know, but that's not generating revenue. Well, it could, it might, it might do this. Well, ultimately, there's only a handful of people who could really elevate or control or take me to another level. So those are the people that I could answer yes to. But if it's the feel good, if it's the social, you know, I, I would want to address one other thing as we're talking about the critical few and the trivial many, and that is the idea of balance. One of the things that you have to give up when you're in a 90 day race is the notion of balance as we know it. Right. Balance to me is not the way society has defined it in the past 10 or 15 years. We understood it as work life balance. That is a corporate idea. That's a, that's not a social, it became a social, but work life balance is no balance at all because it means you suck at both. <laughs> it really does. Because both are getting the short end of the stick. Your family gets you three or four hours a night, best case. Right. Well, your company has got eight to ten hours. So your family already is getting the, the less of it uh, the, the, and the short end of the stick. But yet, and that's if you're spending, you know, from six to ten with a leverage night, and most don't. So 
uh, and then work's getting it because they expect you to be still be doing things and stay plugged in on nights and weekends and vacations and holidays and things like that. So both are being shortchanged. That is not balance, but especially in the course of a 90 day race, what balance actually is, is doing what you were called to do. Now it doesn't mean you don't rest. It doesn't mean you don't spend time with people and enjoy family. Right. It means you bring them along with you. It means you integrate them in what you're doing. It means you get them on board. Hey, let's, let's get fit together. Let's eat healthy together. Let's all, this isn't just my pageant. We're all gonna jump on, on board here and let's participate. I want this to be a group effort. It's a team effort. I can't do this without you. And it doesn't matter if you're a, a junior team, you know, you've got to have your, your posse, your tribe, your support, uh, structure and system there. So balance when you're in a 90 day, race, 90 day race is running all out. It's running full steam. If you are balanced in the traditional sense of the word, uh, then you are not balanced in a 90 day race. The whole point of a 90 day race is here's the, let me, let me, illustrate the story. I was in Spain a couple years ago. They brought the top 20 startup companies in the world. Uh, and then the King and others brought uh, 15 advisors to get them ready for you know, funding. I was one of the 15. And uh, so it was three weeks all expense paid on the island of Menorca. Incredible experience. But one of the things, uh, we were sitting at Manel Adele's estate, 200 acre estate, crazy, gorgeous Menorcan stallions. Uh, he's got a sailboat, you know, over there in the Mediterranean because we're, uh, you know, right there on the island. And uh, there's about six of us sitting on his porch. He and his wife were right there. Uh, Manel Adele was the CEO of Desigual, which is the largest Spanish clothier in the world. They're in the floor mall there. I mean, they're all, they're all over a retail store. Took them from $10 million to over $10 billion uh, in about 11 years. Unbelievable story. And they've been married for 30 some years. And there were two guys there that were business partners of the largest fintech, uh, financial services tech uh, firm of Europe. They've raised more venture capital than any other uh, firm. And the two of them were there and, and both married. One had two kids. And he asked the question. And you got to understand, this is heart, heart to heart stuff. And he, he said, uh, about an hour or two in the conversation, he said, Manel, how are you still married? Like, you can't grow a company like that and keep a family because you're never there. When you are there, you're you're really not there. How do you do it? And the way Manel described it is his way of version of the 90 day race. He said, see the sailboat? When I'm sailing, my wife, when I'm sailing, I love to sail. I mean, I sail, I take tight turns. I've got that sucker almost, you know, as close as I can. But when my wife's on the sailboat, I can't run that hard. I can't, I can't do it this long and this hard. I have to, you have to know your family. You have to know your spouse. You have to know your team. Right. And you got to know how far you can lean, how hard you can run, and for how long. She can handle a quick turn like this. <laughs> she can't handle if I stay in it for an excessive period of time. Right. And with the 90-day race, balance is leaning harder than you've ever leaned before but keeping those critical few, the critical few. And only you can know uh, what that is and where those lines are, and it's different for everyone. But you've got to run hard, you run all out. And, and the book kind of describes how exactly week by week, I've got a workbook and video series that goes uh, with each week, and I tell you exactly what you're going to be feeling. I tell you when you're going to want to quit, really quit. Like, you really don't think you, you, you want to quit, but you know you got a little bit more in you. Not that point, the point that you really, really, really want to quit. The, the, the 90th day was the election day. And I had held sign and waved and standing outside of the, one of the election sites, the main one, all day. It was raining. Uh, it was miserable. I was, my body was all worn down from the 90-day race, almost sick. Uh, I was the only one from about 2 o'clock on because there was an election party that night that, you know, I had uh, people hosting for me. And... Um, and so I was the only one for the last few hours there and went to the election party. Things were great, but it, it, it kept tightening and it knew, we knew it was going to be a long, um, a long night. And around one o'clock in the morning, I was, I actually went to sleep and got, uh, went late to the, to the party because uh, I just had no strength. And about midnight or one, I ended up, uh, we, we had to be out of the venue 
I wanted to just go home and just sleep and find out who won tomorrow. And every, you know, my most loyal supporters were like, no way, everybody's coming to my house. We're, you know, no matter how late it takes. And I went over there and I, I just, I, I just ended up passing out until the results came in because I was, I'd left it all on the field. Right. The results were going to be what they were at that point. There was a third candidate who had withdrawn from the race that took over 500 votes, uh, which were anti-incumbent votes. Yeah. But I'm telling you right now, the miracle that God did and what's happened since then, the 90 day race, uh, we gave it on the on our uh, on our CEO cruise this past February, and uh, the inventor of the McDonald's Happy Meal, who will be on the next one, happened to read it, and he said, "This is one of the best books I've, re I've read in years." And he has amazing books, you know, "Changes Good You Go First" and some great books. As well. And uh, he he said, "I've got to introduce you to my publisher." He sent copies to the publisher. The publisher said, we haven't seen a book like this in however many years. We, we, and so bottom line, it was about a month from the time they got the books to the time that they had a contract in my hands. Uh, and it will be in every Costco, BJ's, uh, Walmart, Target, some airport shops, uh, uh, April of next year. So, you know, the 90 day race is a concept. It's an idea that the most successful people in the world have used, even though they didn't recognize that's what they were doing. It's, it's not something I invented. I didn't create it. What I did was recognize it and then start being intentional about applying it. That's, that's incredible. I mean, it put a fire in me. It really did. It was, it was like you cannot read the book and not do anything kind of thing. Yes. I, that's the kind of books I love. And I think everybody in the Glass Slipper community can benefit from something like this. Which brings me to my next point. You are... Um, you run the CEO cruise. So tell us about that because any cruise is a good cruise to me. So no, I, love cruising. I love cruising. You know, I, I keynoted a lot of events, uh, a lot of, just a lot of you know, arenas and conference rooms, hotels. And, and I just started really getting a little bit tired of the same dog and pony show, the same stage lighting, the same back lighting, the same uh, music, the same, I just, I really got used to it. And so it was losing its appeal, its impact. Uh, and uh, and if I'm speaking and I'm still a little bored, that's, you know, <laughs> that's not good. There's a million business conferences. There's a million seminars. Right. Uh, you can go to everything from your local chamber to, you know, something uh, that, that, that a national figure is doing. But I really... And, you know, I love cruising. But one of my really important values is authenticity and transparency and vulnerability, being real and being raw. Right. And I have sat in a lot of pitches where entrepreneurs are pitching their, you know, their, their product, service, or business to try and get fun, uh, funding. You're usually given 60 seconds, maybe two minutes or three minutes, and five or 10 slides, best case. And you're asking for you know five hundred five hundred thousand dollars or a couple million dollars or whatever it is, um, and they're in suits, you're in suits, and it's like I don't even know who you are. So you get the best idea in the world, and it will fail if you do it because you're not the person for it. You can't execute the vision. It's a great vision, just not one you should be executing. And so how? That's why so many companies don't get funded in all of these formats that people are trying. So I wanted to kind of bring together everything that got to put on my heart, which was serving entrepreneurs, helping people get to the next level in their life and business, uh, eliminating distractions. And so in my work with high profile individuals, one of the methods that I used, you know, if, uh, if an NFL quarterback had a few losing games and he's about to get fired and they call me, I'm not going to go to his house right. and try to get him out of the funk. And I'm not going to meet him at a Starbucks. <laughs> you know, that's not going to work either. We have to go to a neutral location. We have to, I have to do what I call a pattern disrupt. I have to get them out of their element. And I have to, and I have to keep them out of their element long enough to get through. Right. Uh, so the cruise, there was no better way to take an entrepreneur or a CEO or an executive or just a business person that has aspirations for whatever right. than to get them to disrupt their patterns, their day-to-day -day patterns, the geography that they're used to, get them on a boat in the Bahamas, shows, uh, amazing food, amazing people, hot tubs, pools. You're in your swimsuit, so you're not, you're not fooling anybody, you know, or putting on a free <laughs> time. 
that it's just us. Yeah. And we bring on incredible people that are not your normal conference speakers. We don't bring on motivational speakers. We don't bring on, we bring on people who are doing it or who have done it that just share. They share their story. They want to, they come from serve. They have servants hearts. They want to give, they want to support, they want to elevate. It's their mission really. Uh, and so we bring these people together that you normally could not have access to. <clears throat> the CEO of McDonald's was in one of their offices for a day about three weeks ago getting counsel. You know, so when you start thinking about the kind of people that you are in your, that, that we're just in our swim trunks with, and we're talking like this, yeah. relationship happens. Yes. Like it does not happen near to the degree at, co at conferences. That's where business cards are exchanged and, you know, it's more like a networking event there. This is, is so much more than that. It's relationship. It's, and, and really it's access. So our CEO crews, they can get more information at ceocruise.com. But I found it a couple of years ago, uh, Peter Lowe, who founded the Get Motivated Success Seminars, yeah. one of the largest seminars in the world. Uh, he packed arenas for 25 years, had six U.S. presidents uh, across the stage, Colin Powell, uh, Norman Schwarzkopf, uh, you know, who led the Gulf War, and uh, Mikhail Gorbachev after the wall fell in, in the Soviet Union, <laughs> uh, Mother Teresa, the Dalai Lama, uh, <laughs> the, the people that he has – has uh, Larry Keene that, that have just been a part of his journey uh, is incredible. And we, we partnered up uh, with the CEO crews uh, beginning of 2017 and it's been a great journey. So Peter will be on there. Same, same thing with a, lot, a number of other people. Uh, but it's, uh, they get more information at CEO The, uh, we have a special, um, I, I wait for it for your audience. Um, if they will use the, uh, first of all, the cruise right now is a, it's already subsidized at $199 a person. Okay? And that includes, yeah, it includes port fees, taxes, gratuities. Most of them don't include flu gratuities. This includes all of those things. So literally $199, $199 per person. It's based on double occupancy. So you have to have two people in the cabin uh, to get that rate. Uh, or you basically pay for two people regardless, even if it's you in there. So it's double occupancy cabin. But what we've done for your audience, uh, and uh, it's, it's, the code is going to be live through the end of this week, um, but if they use the discount code COSMOS, C-O-S-M-O-S, -O -S, use the discount code COSMOS, C-O-S-M-O-S, it's going to be $49 for the cabin plus the poor fees, taxes, and gratuity. So it literally takes off uh, $100 for two people. So for, two, for $297, uh, people are going on an all-inclusive, three-day, two-night, faith-based cruise to the Bahamas with incredible people. That includes the conference fees, all meals, the shows, you know, the Bahamas, it's just going to be an incredible experience. So wow, uh, we, that, is awesome. that is incredible. I didn't know about this. Thank you so much for doing that for us. My pleasure. I mean, that is, I, I can't wait to go on it. And now um, I better hurry up and book it so, <laughs> because there's not going to be any room. People like you are ideal. That's who's supposed to be on the cruise. Before you ever hosted a CEO entrepreneur cruise, uh, you were the kind of person we had in mind. Somebody who's moving forward, who's, who, who is positive, who is real, who's not perfect, but the, the motives are pure, the hearts are pure, the, the, the intention is there, and uh, the competency is there, and those are the people that we want to support. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, if, and people who come on with, in that space, it's amazing. It's absolutely a turning point in your life. It's a pattern disrupt. I can't tell you how many people we've had that literally they now describe their life, not just their business, their life as in pre-cruise and post-cruise. Oh, wow. Of course, we have people who would never miss one because they're all different. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. And oh my goodness. So when, can you uh, tell us the dates again? Oh yes, October 7th through the 9th. So we are just under 90 days. We're about 85 days away ourselves. We are in the 90 day race, you know, really just getting ready uh, yeah. for that and promoting it. And so we're really excited about it. October 7th through the 9th, it departs West Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, we leave on a Sunday. Uh, you want to board at noon. We come back Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. is when we're in port. So it's really you're only missing one business day because you can, you can hit it, you know, Tuesday as soon as you get back. Uh, but it's an easy uh, drive. It's an easy flight. Uh, in and out of either Fort Lauderdale, West Palm, or Orlando's only two and a half hours away. And uh, there's a, a whole group 
going from there. So there's just a lot of uh, a, a lot of great reasons uh, to be on there. And there's always reasons to go. There's always reasons not to go. The question is going to be where do you want to be, uh, you know, end of this year. Uh, one day of favor is worth a lifetime of favor. Yes. One day of favor uh, is worth a lifetime of labor. Favor is what happens on this cruise. You can slave away, you can grind it out, but I'm telling you, in the midst of all of that, when the right person recognizes what you're doing and what you have, and there's favor, it elevates you every single time. Wow, I, I believe it. <laughs> I believe it for sure. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I mean, I have so much gratitude towards you and you are one of my favorite people in this whole world so um well, you're an inspiration to so many and that's that's my goal and the fact that i can support you in that way um you know it, it's that's my purpose so I, I think when we all find our purpose and we we're, we're owning our own power uh not being perfect but we are doing our best, and we're <laughs> best uh, that's all you can ever ask and, and that's all but i but you know one thing that i really do like is that you demand excellence of yourself I demand excellence of myself. Uh, we execute. Uh, we don't wait for perfection because that's that's silly. Right. It's not attainable as a person or in business. By the time you ever perfect something, it's going to be out of date and not worth anything. Uh, it doesn't perfect the pager. We don't use pagers anymore. You know? uh, we still be trying to figure out how to make the best pager ever. Yeah. And at some point, you just got to ship it. You got to you got to just move forward. And that's what makes for a successful entrepreneur, that mindset. The battles of life will be won or lost in the mind. And so the 90-day race, the CEO cruise, the empowerment package that you've put together for the glass slipper, the uh, programs that you have with the glass slipper that elevate women, that empower pageant, uh, you know, girls aspiring to do pageants, and just all of the things that you're involved in, uh, that is what success ultimately is, everything else is is transactional and it's it's a means for you to be able to have the platform to reach other people amen <laughs> i love it and one last question um is the reason you're uh you strive for perfection because you're kentuckian my mom was born and raised in louisville kentucky and uh, i love lexington and, and different parts of, of kentucky and uh, yeah, it's, it's just a hop, skip, and a, and a jump from my, the holler in West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> You're a Kentuckian at heart, and I love that. <laughs> yeah. Go Cats. Go Cats. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Dr. Roberts. Your, um, your wisdom is invaluable, and we can't thank you enough for all you're doing for the Glass Slipper. And um, I'm going to post all the links to the CEO Cruise, the Empowerment Package to the 90 Day Race, and your other books uh, in this um, Facebook post. So I um, appreciate it again. And um, My pleasure. Many <laughs> blessings to you and to your community. Thank you. All right, I'm going to sign off, and um, we'll talk soon.